exercise programs vary with different individuals and different sports. Some people like to cross train, some people like to run and lift weights. Looking at an overall exercise program for an average person should contain the five key components of physical fitness, cardio, muscular strength and endurance, flexibility, and body composition. Elite athletes need to further their exercise programming by looking at periodization, aerobic and anaerobic training, and physical testing. There are two types of muscle fibers in your body, slow twitch and fast twitch. Slow twitch fibers are meant for aerobic work and can contract for longer periods of time without fatiguing. Fast twitch fibers are meant for anaerobic work and produce more overall force. The fast twitch fibers are important for quick and powerful movements. How many fast and slow twitch fibers you have in your body is mainly genetic. You either have them or you don't. However, training increases the functional capacity of both types of fibers, and strength training increases their abilities to exert power. In everyday movements, slow twitch fibers are recruited first. Once the activity increases in intensity and power, fast twitch muscle fibers are then put into action. The type of training exercise you do will determine the type of muscle fibers you are recruiting. Short, quick sprints with minimal recovery time or plyometric jumping exercises will push your fast twitch fibers to be quicker. Long, slow runs will give you more endurance to your slow twitch muscle fibers. As an athlete, you need to understand what is needed for your sport and make a training program accordingly. Your nervous system stimulates your muscles to contract. Your brain sends a signal along a neuron that is attached to your muscle fibers. It's like an electric shock for your muscles that stimulates them to contract or shorten, effectively moving the bone or limb that they are attached to. You will learn more about these intricate chemical reactions in the nervous system unit. Overload is a training principle that affects strength. In order to increase the power and quickness of your fast twitch muscle fibers, you need to increase the demands on the muscles systematically and progressively over time. The resistance must be strong enough or heavy enough for changes to occur. Muscles have to be used repeatedly beyond their accustomed loads to increase their ability. Strength training or lifting weights uses the overload principle in a number of ways. You can increase the resistance and make the weight heavier and heavier each time you lift. You can increase the number of repetitions to give the fibers more endurance. Or you can increase the volume of exercise and sets that you are performing. There are two different ways you can train your muscles to improve your strength. Isometric and dynamic training. In isometric training, muscle contractions produce little or no movement, such as pushing or pulling or holding your body in a certain position for a length of time. Plank and side plank are examples of isometric training. In dynamic training, the muscle contractions produce a movement and contract to get shorter and longer, such as a bicep curl or a leg press. Isometric training is helpful in sports where you need to hold certain positions like gymnastics and dance. Isometric contractions also teach an athlete to resist movement and stabilize their body in order to stay in a good athletic position. Hockey, soccer, and basketball athletes can all benefit from isometric training, as well as downhill ski racers who need to hold that tuck position for a length of time. Dynamic training is the most popular mode of strength training. And there are two phases in dynamic training, concentric and eccentric contractions. Concentric is when the muscle fibers are shortening to overcome the resistance, like lifting a weight in your bicep curl. You are contracting the biceps brachii muscle to bring the forearm to the shoulder. In the eccentric contraction, the muscle fibers lengthen as the weight is lowered back down. The resistance or weight you use in strength training is like intensity in aerobic training. You have to increase this resistance to see gains in performance. You can increase the weight but do less repetitions of the movement. And once this becomes easy, and you can do 10 to 12 reps of the same weight, you need to again increase the resistance and do less repetitions. There are three phases you can think of when strength training. Hypertrophy, which is 10 to 12 reps of a certain weight. Strength, which is four to six reps. And power, which is one to three reps of a certain weight. Each phase should be about four to six weeks long with an adequate one week rest in between phases. This type of training is called periodization. This approach should be used for an athlete's year-long training cycle. Periodization is a training approach that uses a systematic variation in intensity and volume to enhance fitness and performance. The body becomes stronger as a result of training, but if we keep training the same way all the time, the body becomes complacent and tired. Peak fitness cannot be maintained during an entire season, and most athletes use a variety of training modes to keep fit. 
There are many different names or systems that all use the umbrella of periodization. We're going to look at three main cycles that are called macrocycles, mesocycles, and microcycles. These cycles vary in length depending on your sport. Typically, the overall training period is referred to as the macrocycle. The macrocycle is divided into smaller monthly training phases known as mesocycles. For example, a runner's season, their macrocycle, is divided into four smaller mesocycles. Off-season, where the athlete maintains a base fitness level. The pre-season, where the athlete moves into more sport-specific training. In-season, when the athlete is preparing for multiple smaller competitions. Then peak performance, which is the main competition of the year. Within these four smaller mesocycles, there are daily or weekly microcycles that follow the main objectives, but the workouts are varied to avoid boredom and fatigue. During the off-season, a running athlete is training with general strength and conditioning with weight training, jogging, cycling, or swimming to keep fit. In the pre-season, the volume of strength training is decreased and the total running distance per week is increased. During the competitive season, the athlete maintains a limited strength training program but now increases the intensity of the runs while decreasing the distance. During the peaking phase, the volume of training is decreased, but the intensity is kept high, getting ready for the ultimate race. After the peak phase, the athlete will go through a two to four week period of low intensity activities other than running or lifting to give the body a break before starting once again with off-season training. Periodization is often used for muscular development and the cycles of strength training. The macro cycle for strength training involves three mesocycles, hypertrophy, strength, and power. The program starts with high volume and low intensity, so lots of repetitions with light weights. As the mesocycles switch, the volume decreases and the intensity increases. Take a look at the chart to understand the different repetitions and the corresponding intensity levels. You should always take a week rest in between the mesocycles to give your body time to recover. For an elite athlete, training is year-round. It becomes a way of life and an athlete is always at some cycle in their training. Off-season is just a chance to get stronger, fitter and faster for the upcoming season. Determining the correct training program is essential for your success.